Did you have a preferred weapon that you would use time and time again, or did it not matter? It, it depends. I like a three fifty seven Magnum. I've used a thirty eight. I use a thirty two. Uh, different kind of guns, but a three fifty seven Magnum is just so fucking powerful. It, it's lights out. Yeah. It's like an atom bomb just hit this room. Everybody in here, we're just dead instantly. You don't know you're dead. You don't know if you don't feel pain. There's nothing. Yeah. It's over. So. You're 78 years old right now? I'm 78. I'll be 79 in March. Do you think at this age you could still do a hit? I can, you know, probably beat you up and then go do a hit right after that. Okay. How about that? All right. I'm in good shape for my age. Yeah. I'm, I'm exaggerating. But uh, I'm in great shape. I never got fully out of shape in my entire life. I was always a workout guy. I went in the ring, I fought, I fought in the street. Yeah. And always kept myself, my clothes get a little tight, uh, watch what I eat. Not to try and do a diet, but you know, I don't like getting overweight or too thin or something like that. Yeah. And I've always done sit-ups, push-ups, boxing, jumping rope. Swimming. Yeah, I interviewed Teddy Atlas. You guys trained together at one point. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't get too deep into our story, but I know that you guys did train together at some point. Yeah, we did. Yep. I remember there was an interview you said that you were watching TV, and the whole David Koresh thing came on TV. The Camp Davidian. Remember how everyone died? Mm -hmm. How he told everyone that he was Jesus, and. Hundreds of people, I believe, died in the process, including yeah, yeah. children, Watch. women, yeah. everything else like that. And you're watching it, and you're saying, wow, how could someone be so brainwashed by a guy like this? And then you realize that you yourself were brainwashed. I, I think that everybody's brainwashed to some sort of capacity. Now, again, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but... We grow up and we listen to our mother and father who mean well, but maybe it's not the right thing. Our friends and neighbors have a big impact on us. It's not brainwashing like David Koresh. And I don't know if he brainwashed them. They believed in him. Mm -hmm. They prayed with him. Yeah. I don't even see where he did all that wrong. He might have had, I, they say had sex with kids. I didn't see that when I watched it. I didn't hear too much of that. Some of the people who survived didn't talk about that. Yeah, he was the God. He was the Christ coming back. Um, he also built a massive arsenal of weapons. Yeah. A massive, mass, which is how he got, you know, which is why the FBI showed up and ultimately how the shootout started. Yeah, but they... They were making innuendos to him that they were going to come, they were going to attack, they were going to do this, they were going to do that, and he started getting weapons. He was going to fight back. Yeah. So, go into a black neighborhood and tell this neighborhood, I'm going to take your fucking neighborhood over. Now they'll become like David Koresh. They'll say, no, fuck you. I'm not coming into my neighborhood and taking us over. This is my daughters, my wife, my kids, my friends. What if they fucking load up? Well, it's a little bit different. I, because, yeah, of course it's a little bit different. Because generally when you look at like gangs, like Crips and Bloods, you know, and I've, I've talked to, you know, I've interviewed a lot of these guys. If you're in a Crip neighborhood and like the Bloods show up, you could be outnumbered 10 to 1 and they will shoot it out. One cop will roll in and everyone will scatter. People are generally, in these types of neighbors, they're generally scared of the police. They'll generally bow down to the police. David well, Koresh took a whole different the police, path. What if the police are telling them, we're, we're not going to come in with one cop. We're coming in, we're taking this over. But that was happening. The whole fucking so with the day. Battle Rams and everything else like that. Like that was happening in the, in the 80s, the, the crack era and everything else like that. that. That was really happening. But you didn't see these massive armed shootouts against the police in these neighborhoods, like what happened with David Koresh. Why did all those people stay and die with him? Because they thought that they were all going to heaven. They all believed that this was Jesus. Maybe that's, and maybe that's where they are. <laughs> yeah, maybe, who knows? Maybe that's where they went. <laughs> maybe but they're they all believe in, in him. Right. So they didn't believe what we tell them. Right. 
he's a nut and yeah. should never do it. But the point is, is that isn't that similar to what you went through? Like you have to, when you got sworn in as a made man, they said, if your mother is dying on her deathbed, if your kids are have a terminal illness and you get a call, you got to drop that and you have to put us over your own family. Isn't that a similar type of thing? Without a doubt. But it's an expression. In other words, when I'm telling you how important this brotherhood is, I'm telling you that this is above God, country, and your family. If you're in a hospital with your son who's dying, you know, your mother, and the boss calls you, drop what you're doing and come in. This is number one in your life. Now, reality, if your son, God forbid, is dying, or your mother, I'm not going to call you. Hmm. I'm just putting that in you to give you and make an understanding of how important this is. Well, well, but to be fair, and this is not just the mafia, and we're not just talking about your situation either. You know, I I interviewed a guy that was a high-ranking guy in the Nuestra Familia, and he talked about a situation where one of the members, their mother, was cooperating with the police, and they told him that they have to kill his mother. And he said, I understand. You see what I'm saying? You could say all this is all make-believe, but these real-life situations where you have to potentially kill family members and you have to put the gang over your own flesh and blood, this actually does happen, and there's a practice of it. And like I said, yes, it's your it situation could, which it, we're not going to get into, but it I'm it saying... Could, it could happen. And it does happen. It, it do, it, but it, you have to understand, if you're taking that oath and coming in, mm -hmm. he or she or him, is your brother just as important as this person who broke fucking rules is going to die? You, can, I'll give you an example. I was in jail and I had the, the library I was in charge of. There was a guy, JB, heavyweight mob guy in the old time who was older than me. And, the, and another guy, Banks, from Chicago. We were sitting, talking, having coffee. And we were talking about the underboss of the Cavacanti family who did some gay thing, stuff, and they killed him. So the conversation came up, and I was sitting there, and I said, I knew him personally. I don't know if that's even true, but... Is, is being gay a death sentence in the mafia? Let me finish, I, okay. then you'll see. Sorry. So he said, well, it had to be done, Sammy. Why? We took some woman's word. Why does it have to be done? Because he's gay. It's an embarrassment. All right. Okay. JB, let me ask you something. You're going to go home before me. You got a couple of kids, don't you? You got a son and a daughter or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm all right. You're going to go home. Your son's going to come to you and say, Dad, I'm gay. I'm going to come out of the closet. Are you going to kill him? Come on, Sam. He's my son. How about your daughter? Your daughter tells you she's gay. Come on, Sam. He's my daughter. The fucking guy we killed is our brother. By our blood, our, our oath. We killed him. Then what do you do? He's the, he was the underboss of the Calvin Candy family. Take him to call him in. We're not going to kill you. We're going to take you down. You can't be the underboss. We're going to take you down to become a soldier, friend of ours, not even a captain, a friend of ours. Keep it on the side and, and put shade on this, bro. Or just you just have to leave the organization. For no, whatever. you don't have to leave. You don't even have to. Why? I don't know. I, mean, I don't, I don't know how these rules... what you do or he does behind closed doors. Right. You're not going to come to a sit down in a fucking dress. We're going to kill you. <laughs> so, I mean, but there's no reason... To kill him, he's our brother, <laughs> right? And and whatever it is, so when he looked at it that way, the guy from Chicago said, "Sammy, what would you do if you were the boss?" Then I would call him in a fucking room, and some woman said they went to a swingers club, and she said that he, she was banging two guys, and he went and was sucking somebody's dick. So that's that's why we killed him. Because she said it, 
she's not in our life. Yeah. We didn't even give our brother a chance to talk, to defend himself. Mm -hmm. So I would put him in a fucking room with a gun on the counter. He comes in. We're bringing her in and tell him, you're not going to die. Just tell us the fucking truth. You'll be brought down and put on the side. But if you say she's lying, we'll get her out of the room. We'll bring her in this fucking room. There's the gun on the table. Walk over, get the gun, walk over, shoot her in the fucking head. We're all leaving, and you kids get rid of taking care of this body and all. Mm. Or tell us the fucking truth. You're going to kill this woman for nothing. She's telling the truth. That's what you do. And it's his fucking job to kill her and clean it up. So he's got a thinking. I tell the truth, I'm not going to die. I don't get in trouble. I'll put on the side a little bit. And I don't have to do this. Mm. That's what you do. Then, if you say, no, she's lying, then we call her in the room. And we talk to her. And we see for ourselves what we think, if she's lying or you're lying. Yeah. If we think she's you're lying, you're going to kill her anyway and clean it up. If we think you're lying, we're going to kill you and her. Because look at the meeting you put her in now. Yeah. She's never going to leave this room anyway. Right. So it's the guy from Chicago, bad, says, him, that's why John Gotti shouldn't have been the boss. You should have been the boss. Mm. That's fucking unbelievable thinking. But that's the way you think. Wait, wait so did John Gotti... No, no, John Gotti's not in it. Yeah, okay, I got it. He's just saying you should oh, be a boss if you think okay. that way in general. Got it, got it in general. You know, but uh, you, you you can't just kill your brother because some woman said, what if some woman tells me something about you? Yeah. Why, I just believe her? We're friends for 20 years? I don't see no sign of that. I don't see no problem with it. Has there ever been an openly gay made man in the mafia? Yeah. Really? But they put shade on it, yeah. Who? Uh, there was a guy in the Genovese family, and there was the guy in the, the Cavacanti family. He was the underboss. Okay. And she said it on a live television show, the, mm. the girl that, his, girl, ex, his girlfriend. Okay. And she was in, a, they were in the swingers club. She was having sex with but, two but guys. The, but the other guy who you mentioned? Yeah, he, I don't even remember his fucking name, and they, it was in Chindiganti, they put him, as a soldier, and low-key, what the fuck you doing, bro? Okay. And you'll be okay. We're not going to kill you for it. But, but he, if you but go he can't stupid, maintain, he can't maintain the position he once had. No, he can't be a captain, underboss, underboss, boss. He can't be in any of those positions. Got it. No. 